This is Scott Brown with Connie and Dick Service Center in Claremont, California. And some of you know I have been doing ADAS instruction uh, for other technicians and actual uh, instructors out there and um, raising the awareness uh, of what these ADAS systems are, how they work, uh, what's going on behind the scenes, and also doing calibration and diagnostics. And today we're talking about LIDAR, which is light detection and ranging uh, versus radio detection and ranging, uh, which is radar. And what the system is doing, it's basically using light outside of our human visible spectrum. So we cannot see the actual light, which makes it difficult for a technician to understand, hey, is this thing actually working? What's going on with it? Um, for those that want to know a little bit more, we're going to dive in and take a look. I've got two sensors here. I've got one here. This is the uh, 2015 Mazda 3. It has what's called the uh, City Smart Brake System, uh, Smart Brake Support. Um, it works pretty good. I've tested vehicles out here in our parking lot with, uh, with our little portable dummy that we can move uh, from be behind traffic into the or behind parked cars into the pathway, and um, uh, pretty impressed with uh, how it works. Very small sensor, uh, very uh, looks looks very simple, but uh, we'll go into this. Uh, this is a solid state style uh, radar or a uh, lidar, sorry, uh, solid state lidar system. The very bottom section is uh, is where the uh, output is, uh, so the imager outputs a signal, it goes through this special lens. This, this lens here is actually split up and you'll be able to see the pattern here on the board in a second when I get my Oculus unit fired up and uh, we'll walk through that. And then the second one down here is a, a mechanical rotating LiDAR sensor and this is off of a 2019 um, Audi A6 and, um, and it's a scanning LiDAR. A LIDAR system uh, that, again, is used for uh, perception. And uh, so what I'm going to do here, we've got this camera rolling. I've got this camera rolling, and we're going to go into the Oculus system. And I'm going to turn these other shop lights off here so it'll get a little dark. I'll try to bump up the gain here, and uh, we'll walk through this. As you can see, this camera right here, this uh, LIDAR uh, light detection and ranging device is actually outputting a signal. You see it actually flashing out of this bottom section. And what it does is it's outputting a pattern and it has receptors up here in the top. And there's two Fresnel style lenses. So they're like big bug fisheye type lenses. They've got some special cuts in them. I did take this sensor completely apart to, to examine it. And the imager uh, the receptor on the right side, uh, it's actually my left here looking at it, but it would be on the right side of the vehicle. On the back side where the sensing element is, there's actually two camera sensors. And then on the other side, we only have one camera sensor. The other interesting thing I saw was that alongside the bottom of the, of the unit, they had another sensor sitting, and I believe it was to verify that there's actually an output uh, a laser or a near-infrared signal being outputted there. Um, so for, for feedback and verification. So we'll talk a little bit about this one first. This guy is outputting a pattern, and you might be able to see it, or you should be able to see it. So we're looking at it here. You can see we have a block here. We have actually two blocks on the right. In the center, we actually have two blocks. You can see a little line separating those two. And then over here on the left, we have two more blocks. So these are up high. It's scanning the area right out in front of the vehicle. And that's what it's using detect, to detect if there's um, any objects, pedestrians, uh, vulnerable road users uh, in the area uh, so that the vehicle can then take uh, proper corrective action and avoid um, having a, a, an incident. The other sensor we've got down here, this is the Audi um, A6, and you can actually see the, the there's a light that actually comes out of a laser 
perpendicular to the front of this guy. So it, it's scanning across and there's a spinning mirror that is reflecting that light. Now, I believe the light is being pulsed on and off and it's really hard to tell here because we've got frame rate uh, challenges with uh, the, the Oculus here and the camera. But uh, point out a couple of things. Um, first, it's uh, range of view here, it's pretty cool. Uh, I've got a protractor here that this is sitting on top of. And if I put my hand here and here, I can see the range. And it's about a 165 degree sweep that it's making. The other cool thing here to take a look at is that that spinning block in there, there's a mirror on each side. And I believe what's going on here is that we've got, they are not at the same angle. So on one sweep, we've got a high pathway, and on the other sweep, it, it scans lower. So, so that's how it's varying the output of the near-infrared signal. And then it has this huge, on the inside here, we'll, we'll get a, a better look uh, when we take this apart, it has a huge receptor that, again, it picks it up from that mirror, and that's how it's determining where uh, these objects are. It's painting, point, painting that point cloud, uh, similar to how um, the Oculus will paint out that point cloud of the environment here in my workshop here. We're able to visualize this actually using the Oculus, and <laughs> this thing is actually really cool. It uses LiDAR as well uh, to map out environments, and I just wanted to show you this screen, which when I drew my boundary, uh, <clears throat> it identified objects that were in the way, and you can see where it's actually painted out a point cloud, and this is it, basically what the camera systems are doing in these vehicles utilizing LiDAR. Uh, they're trying to paint a point cloud around the front of the vehicle or around the vehicle uh, to keep it safe, uh, to keep it away from objects. Uh, and this, this Oculus system is pretty well defined. You can actually see the extension cord that I've got hanging down here, it actually mop, marked it out. Um, pretty cool. I mean, and, and the heights and everything are very accurate. Uh, you can see the height of my camera here. So I'm gonna basically we'll power this guy off for just a second. And let me just point out, you can see with the Oculus, you can see the, the LED flashing for all the output numbers there and also the button, so we're gonna turn this off. Let this guy power down. It's telling me to remove my headset because I've had it on too long, but I'm gonna disregard. So I've got this, this sensor I've taken apart. Uh, remove the, to, so I can take the front screen off of this. And uh, I'm gonna basically had to use a pretty strong rubber band to make this work. I want to make sure it doesn't interfere with anything here. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm going to pull this rubber band down. Okay. Because I want to power this up without the, um, without the lens on it. So anyways, we've got a lens on the front of this. And a couple of things to point out. It has a heating grid on front of it because, of course, you know, in very cold climates, if you've got ice or snow on here, you want to be able to heat it up and, and clear out that area. But this guy, if you look at it just with your eyes, you cannot see through this. But with the, this LiDAR, um, you know, I'm in the, on the Oculus unit, and I can actually see right through it. See right through the, the unit there. And uh, we are still broadcasting there, okay. Yeah, so I can scan through this. And if you look, my power supply there, so we can see what's going on there. I can, I can see through this, and if I go down, it basically blocks out all of that light. So I've tracked out any light from the environment so that it won't affect that sensor's ability to do, to do its job. So it filters out certain lights. If I come over here and I look at my computer monitor, 
you can see a little bit of the light coming through, but for the most part, it blocks it all out. Uh, there's one LED that, that is lit up there, but the other one is pretty much blocked out. You can still see some of the sunlight coming through. But if we look at this up close, look at this in the camera, and my, I, I look at the monitor, and the monitor goes away on the camera itself. But if you take this outside in the sun and you look through it, you'll see it's, it's pretty blue. It's, it's like a heavy blue, and you can get uh, a little bit of red to come through, but uh, pretty, pretty interesting. So let's power up our sensors again. And what I've found that sometimes this lower, the spinning sensor will actually quit because the heater grid, I believe what's going on here, when I have the heater grid off, sometimes it just stops. It'll only run for a few seconds, but it uh, looks like it's gonna continue to run. I believe that's because it sees that it doesn't have the, the sensor, it doesn't have a circuit and it just defaults and turns it off. So you can see that we're scanning here. We look through this, we can still see those lights. You know, it cuts down the white. It, it, you know, it cuts down a little bit of the light, but uh, again, the way these perception systems or these LiDAR systems see, and same with radar, we don't get to see that data. Um, so this is the, the goal here is to add a little deeper knowledge of how these systems actually uh, react so all right so one of the other things I wanted to explore here on this particular device is to take a look and see what's uh, what's being communicated out on this device so uh, this I looked at the wiring diagram it is on a high-speed can so that's 500 kilobits per second and I've got a device here I'm using it's called can capture uh, that allows me to take in a can database file uh, that, that has defined a number of signals. I found some GitHub stuff. Uh, this is from a 2015 model year car. I found some 2017 stuff. So took that in and we'll take a look at that. But in order to get it to work, uh, since it's on that high speed can, I look at the network topography and I see that there's two terminating resistors. Well, the resistor is not in this device. It's in, there's two other modules. So. I added another terminating resistor and I wanted to show you what it looked like on PicoScope because I couldn't, I, I tried to connect directly to it and was unable to get a signal. And I want to show you what that looks like. I'll back out my 120 ohm resistor so you can see what it looks like here. And I've got to get our lead, lead connected. And we're just going to look at one half of the signal. We'll look at can high. So we're going into our ground here and this is our can high. We plug that guy in. Okay. And so we're 10, 10 volts per division. You can see our signal looks pretty crappy, right? So what we're going to do is um, slide in that terminating resistor and you'll see what happens to that signal. So now our signal is, is active. It doesn't look very good and primarily that's because it's not just a simple 20, 120 ohm resistor. Usually it's 260 ohm resistors and a uh, voltage divider type circuit with a uh, capacitor to spec comes off of that and goes to ground. And that's to tune that circuit. But I was able to verify that, yes, I can get communication and we'll prove that out here. So I'm gonna open up another application here called, uh, we'll just leave our scope running. I've got this can capture application and I still have this Mazda. I'm going to basically open the 2017. And then I'm going to hit Start Capture. It's going to ask me to name this. So we'll do number five. And we can see over here in the right, uh, the right side of the screen, we've got no errors. 
the bus load at a 250 kilobit capacity is only 4%. So we're getting about 94 messages per second. Um, average byte message byte size is uh, 16 bytes. If we look at the raw capture frame here, uh, this this actually doesn't have a good um, a, a good CAN definition file. So if we look at the properties of this particular signal, CAN empty, um, not much there. Uh, pedestrian, I'm not sure what what that is, but I was able to get. So you can see this top. This top row here is actually changing. And if we go down to this packet watch here, this message ID, so I've got 512, I'm gonna get rid of that guy. 541 here. So we're gonna watch, we're gonna put this to the packet watch down here. And you can see the last data and the number of messages that have come across, the, the average period of time how many messages per second? So about 50 messages per second. But as I move my hand in front of it, you can actually see the data changing. Uh, but the problem is we don't know what that, that actual data is, okay? So I wanna show you what happens when we remove that 120 ohm resistor. I'm gonna pull it off the low side here. And now we've got errors. See the errors counting up? error buffer overrun, messages lost, we'll look at our, our scope, yeah, we can see that it's junk. Uh, bus load is down to zero, so the, the, the system cannot communicate properly. We'll put our terminating resistor back in there. Now our error counts quit counting up, and uh, we're now able to see, um, see that data again. So this program is pretty cool because you can actually, you can watch for things changing in each one of these bytes here. We just don't have a good definition for like distance or what, what is it actually measuring. See if we can get any useful data out of it uh, to help us understand a little bit more about what's going on here with these uh, camera systems. And hopefully this will help you gain a deeper understanding of what these guys are doing how to diagnose them, uh, how to understand uh, when there's a failure mode, what's normal, what's not normal, and so on. So uh, hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Take care.